The following program is being brought to you on the Voice America Variety Channel. For more information about our network and to check our additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericavariety.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Welcome to Crime Prevention 101 with host Susan Bartlestone. We're so happy you've joined us. Over the next hour, you'll learn the tips, tricks, and vital information that will help you keep yourself confident and safe. Now, here's the host of Crime Prevention 101, Susan Bartlestone. It's almost impossible for someone to even contemplate leaving an abusive relationship or not returning to their abuser, as so many do after they've left, if they don't have the financial knowledge to survive on their own and take care of their family. Financial literacy and economic empowerment removes one huge block to safety. And the important thing is that no one has to do this on their own. Many free resources are available all over the country that can help. And I found this out recently when I served as the MC for a symposium on financial literacy for domestic violence survivors. And it was held by the New York Women's Agenda Domestic Violence Committee, of which I'm one of the co-chairs, and their Economic Security Committee. So since Domestic Violence Month uh, is October, and among other things, as you'll find out, I thought I would discuss this critical topic on the show because I want you to have this information too. And I'll also be speaking with the Empire Education Group, which is one of the largest cosmetology programs in the country. And this is the third year in a row I'm having them on the show. They are, have been early supporters of the Cut It Out program, which teaches salon operators how to spot the signs of domestic violence among their clientele and how to offer help and resources if they do. And Empire had developed their own Empire Gives Back program, it's just a tremendous program, and wait till you hear some of the things that their salon owners and instructors are doing on a grassroots level to, do, uh, to address domestic violence. And October is also Crime Prevention Awareness Month. You know, like, why, why have everything in one month? I, I keep asking that. But anyway, who symbolizes crime prevention more than McGruff the Crime Dog, the iconic symbol of the National Crime Prevention Council? And I'll be speaking with Ann Harkins, who's the president of the NCPC, coming right up. Well, this is Susan Bartlestone, host of Crime Prevention One, coming, <laughs> Crime Prevention 101, coming to you from the ever-exciting New York City, the scene of the crime, as I call it. And just a quick news flash before we get into the program, Crime Prevention 101 has been nominated for a National Crime Victim Service Award. Uh, this is, uh, this is awarded by the U.S. Office for Victims of Crime and we are just so thrilled uh, just to even be nominated. All right. I want to introduce you to Ann Harkins, who took over the reins as president and CEO of the nonprofit uh, National Crime Prevention Council in 2009 after serving in the organization since 2006, and she's had a long, distinguished career in crime prevention before that, including working for Homeland Security. Hello, Ann. Welcome. Hi, Susan. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. All right, and let's just start out by telling everybody what the NCPC, National Crime Prevention Council, what it is and what do you do? The National Crime Prevention Council is the nation's center of excellence to help people keep themselves, their families, their communities safe from crime. I'll just give you one example. If you think about it, kids can't learn if they don't feel safe. And so we are about helping parents and kids and teachers and senior citizens all protect themselves and keep safe. And in some cases, that's lights, locks, and alarms on your home. In other cases, workplace safety, school safety, helping kids protect themselves just as you do, Susan, helping kids protect themselves from becoming victims of crime. And you've got all sorts of wonderful literature and, and, um, and, and different programs and curriculums, right, all sorts of things that you do. 
they're all on our website at ncpc.org, and McGruff carries the message. This is the 30th anniversary year of McGruff the Crime Dog, and his message so to take a bite, <laughs> to take a bite out of started. crime. <laughs> Yes, the Brust the Crime Dog, right? That's the famous icon. Uh, thirty, really, thirty years old now. Thirty years old, and his and, message to take a bite out of crime is a reminder that each of us can do our part. Whether we're seven or a hundred and seven, we can do a, something to help keep ourselves and our communities safe from crime. I have to tell you a funny story now. One of the things that um, people may not know is that there is a McGruff the Crime Dog costume. Yes, there is. And, and, and Worn by crime, law enforcement across the country. Right. Crime prevention officers and or other law enforcement can, can uh, get this suit, and they go out and they do crime prevention programs using your literature and your curriculum and whatnot. And I, I have to say, uh, it, it's a, it's quite an awesome looking suit. I mean, it, it, it really does look like this, this dog and with the trench coat and everything, I've seen it and, and, um, you can't really see out of the holes. So th- the person in the suit has to be led around. And one year I was working at, uh, one of these little crime prevention fairs or something and all of a sudden the dog came walking up to me. And said, you know, Susan Bartlestone, hello. And I looked up and I said, well, do I know you? <laughs> well, I, all I saw was the dog, and it did turn out to be an old friend of mine. And that's how I found out about uh, all of this that, that you can do with, with the McGruff crime dog. It's a pretty awesome thing. And it is, love. and it's wonderful. If, as as I do, I travel with McGruff fairly frequently, and he is, um, as you said, an icon. People, even at, on Times Square in New York, people will cross the street to come say hello to McGruff, and mm-hmm. it's that's what's so important about his message for everyone to do a, a small part to help keep themselves and their families and communities safe from crime. And I should mention that one of the tools that's available on our website, Crime Prevention Month Kit, anybody can take it from our website, take the materials, share them with their PTA, their community group, their community foundation. What the National Crime Prevention Council is about is teaching people how to help keep themselves safe. And so we want you to use our materials. We want um, you to take them and use them, whether it's at a hospital meeting or a PTA meeting. We want you to use those materials. And this year's Crime Prevention Month kit is dedicated. In his 30th year, McGruff is announcing a new initiative called the Circle of Respect. And it's a very nice connection with your next guest and what you were talking about, about people in the salon industry mm-hmm. helping women keep themselves safe. Because the first circle in the circle of respect is respect yourself. And uh, you respect your family, respect your community. And so those folks are respecting their community by helping other women keep themselves safe. And, and it's just, that's a wonderful thing. Oh, this is terrific. Now, is this part of the Celebrate Safe Communities initiative? Yes, it is, because Crime Prevention Month, um, Celebrate Safe Communities is a project that we developed with the National Sheriff's Association and the Department of Justice to remind people, you know, crime prevention is a story that needs to be told. We cleaned up this park, and now there are fewer drug dealers in our town. Um, We had... a a fair where people were taught how to protect themselves, how to protect their identities, how to protect the identities of their children and, in some cases, the older family members who may need an identification bracelet or something like that should something happen to them. And so there are communities all over the country, largely in October, but we want every month to be Crime Prevention Month. And Celebrate Safe Communities is... It's crime prevention done right. 
local people working with local law enforcement to address local problems. So it might be a graffiti cleanup in one community. There's a community in New England that has cups with the cops, and the police station is open on Saturday morning for people to come in and have a cup of coffee and talk one-on-one and build relationships with their local police officers. Oh, great so idea. Those are just some of the things that we do with Celebrate Safe Communities, and we're very excited about that program. And again, all of the materials are on our website, and we want folks to use them. And I, I understand about 175 communities so far have uh, have kind of signed on to be part yes, of this. Yes, uh, today's count was 190. So Ooh. I am happy to report, and I want to thank you, Susan, for um, helping us promote those materials as well. Oh, absolutely. And um, I have to tell you, I'm very proud that... Uh, Voice America is going to be running your PSAs during the station breaks on my show from now on. So I'm absolutely Thank you. thrilled. And uh, you were so kind when I contacted you about it. and I was sent a CD, and we can just take all of the ones that we want off of it. And I guess anyway, that's available for anyone who, who wants to run them on their websites. You can download it right to, to different websites and things like that. That's correct, and we encourage you to use them. And there is also, as part of the Circle of Respect program, Samantha's Choice. Have you seen that anti-bullying? It's an animated short. And if you haven't seen it, I would encourage you and your listeners to take a look and share it with all the young children in your lives. Oh, good. Maybe I'll, put, I'll uh, get it and put it on my blog for, for people to look at. That would be terrific. And uh, one other thing I know that... If, if your community is doing something um, that's, no, that's kind of newsworthy, they can notify you, and you will highlight it on your website. Is that, am I right with that? That's correct. One of the things we do at the National Crime Prevention Council is share best practices and lessons learned. So there's nothing we like better, nothing McGruff likes better than to take a program that's working across it's anywhere in the country and share it with other people who can take can benefit from that. Fantastic. Now, I heard a rumor, so I have to ask you about it. I heard that McGruff was going to be and I guess when he got 30, he might have gotten tired of his trench coat and his fedora, and I heard that he might be coming out of the trench coat. Am I right? Uh, he, has, he has a new look, and you can see it on the animated short I mentioned, Samantha's Choice, and is he which is the, available on our website. So what, what, did he, uh, what was underneath his trench coat? Because we know it wasn't bad. It was not bad. It turns out um, he looks rather like a detective. He calls himself a pretective because he prevents crime. And um, he looks like a nice young gentleman in a um, collared shirt and a tie and pants. Oh, wow. I don't know. I, I, he sounds pretty cool, but I think I'm going to miss the old McGrath. Well, McGruff, we we call we call it classic McGruff at the, at the NCPC, and McGruff. Uh, classic McGruff was, is still with us. Okay, good. Because you know what happened when Coca Cola uh, tried to change their image, didn't didn't go very well. So we well, have I to think have what you, we, the way we think about it is crime prevention is a classic activity for individual people and for communities, and. In some cases, as I said, that's making sure you have lights on in your house when you're not there and you have neighbors check your mail. But today it also has to reflect the computers and new media that we all use every day. And so the message to take a bite out of crime and McGruff's persona are still a very important part of crime prevention in this country. Fantastic. Well, Anne, thank you so much for being with me today. That website is www.ncpc.org. Go go to it. You can get all sorts of great materials for your community. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll come back again. We'll talk about some, uh, if anything, news coming up, we'll get you back on, okay? Susan, thanks for helping us take a bite out of crime. My pleasure. All right, well, this is Crime Prevention 101, the radio show with an optimistic perspective on a sober subject. Make sure you check out ncpc.org. Coming up next, we're going to be talking about the importance of financial literacy for domestic violence survivors with one such survivor, and this is a really inspiring story.
stimulating talk. It gets those synapses in the brain inspired really fast. All the time. The number one Internet talk station where your opinion counts. VoiceAmerica.com. Hi, this is Susan Bartlestone, host of Crime Prevention 101. And I want to tell you about My Mobile Witness, a revolutionary service that transforms your camera phone into a personal safety device. My Mobile Witness believes safety is improved when you remove anonymity from dangerous scenarios. If you're in a stalking situation, for example, if you have an order of protection against someone, or if your profession places you in situations that are potentially dangerous, I want you to check out My Mobile Witness. And you parents of college students, ask the school to check out the My Mobile Witness University program with custom-tailored options aimed at keeping both students and faculty safe. Every campus could benefit from the My Mobile Witness University service. For more information, go to MyMobileWitness.com. Get ready to change your life. Achieve your dreams, become a success story, and accomplish so much more. Tune in to Life Radio with Todd Newton. It's your open access to leading authors, experts, and trainers from the world of self-improvement. Hosted by one of the world's top certified life coaches and motivational speaker, Todd Newton. Achieve the highest levels of personal development in all areas of your life. Listen to Life Radio with Todd Newton. Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific on the Voice America Variety Channel. Violence, theft, drugs, graffiti, it's all part of joining a gang. In times like these, we need to protect our kids and our community from gangs. Gangs often prey on teens with low self-esteem who perform poorly in school and who seek a sense of belonging. Protect kids from gangs. Know who they're hanging out with. Encourage them to become involved in school activities. Give kids a positive alternative to gangs. To learn more, visit ncpc.org or contact your local law enforcement agency. A message from the U.S. Department of Justice, National Crime Prevention Council, and the Ad Council. Ask the experts. Call toll-free right now, 1-866-472-5787. Hello? And ask our all-star team to answer your questions. That's 1-866-472-5787. Thank you for calling. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now, back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. Hello, yes, that's me, Susan Bartlestone here. And there's plenty of show left to tune in for. So you know what? Start tweeting, start texting, start I am about us. Get the word out that we are here. And don't forget that you can follow me on Twitter, on Facebook. I would love to have you come and join the party. And if you want more information about any of my show topics, you can check out my blog, crimeprevention101.com. Now, my next guest, Denise Allen, was the woman that you read about in the newspapers, a mother of two, abused and beaten for 10 out of 20 years of marriage, and who finally left the relationship with absolutely nothing. She said that there there were days when she didn't know where her next meal would come from or how she was going to feed her children. But Denise not only survived, she thrived. And she's now the president of her own 20-year-old company, Tax and Financial Services, and she regularly works with different organizations that service domestic violence survivors like herself, using her pain as a platform to help others. She says if you have the will to survive, you can. Welcome, Denise. Good evening, Susan. Hi. Now, Denise and I, we met at this symposium that I emceed, and Denise, she's going to tell you her story, and she, it was just so awesome what she did that I immediately, you know, told her, you have to come on the show. So, Denise, talk about what happened and wh- where you came from and where you are now. Well, I was um, married in 1977, and um, actually... Um, my ex-husband started abusing me before 
we got married. But I kept on believing that, you know, oh, this is going to change, things will get better, and I married him anyway. Mm-hmm. And, Typical. of course, it became progressively worse. And after several years of um, being with him, I finally got the strength to leave. But um, actually, that's when the party really gets started because, for one thing, if you want uh, child support, you have to allow them to see the kids. And, and when you allow them to see the kids, then they know where you live and, you know, you are and you had, you had two children to, at this point. Yes. All right. You had you two are, children. Yeah, two and, children. And you were just getting by on one salary. Yeah, well, we were, we were, I, was, um, I was actually a stay-at-home mom, and eventually I got a job, but everything was actually based on um, two salaries. So when I had to move um, and get a, um, an apartment, with just my one salary, of course, I had to downsize. I mean, just buying pantyhose was an adventure. Mm. I lived for the summertime, so I didn't have to buy uh, uh, pantyhose. And I and, remember you saying that as you began to insist on going to school and going to work, the abuse in the in the relationship intensified. Yes, yes. While I was a stay-at-home mom, I wanted to go back to school to further advance myself, and... It, I didn't know at the time because I really didn't know anything about domestic violence. And um, I just knew I was in this relationship and I didn't know where to get any help from. It's not open like it is now. You know, mm-hmm. there wasn't, there wasn't a National Domestic Violence Month. It wasn't anything like that. The cops would come to the house, take them out, and come back. He'd come back 15 minutes later. That's so right. th- those things didn't go on, but I wanted to better myself, and I started going to Kingsboro, and I asked him, could I go? He said yes, but he told me, oh, if you want to go to school, you um, you have to still do everything you have to do around the house. So he kept on doing things, first subtle, um, subtly, to stop me. And then, I guess when he realized he wasn't going to stop me, then, you know, the beatings um that were more frequent to actually make me to stop, but I still kept on going. And you, you, have to, you know, one of the things that most women have to remember is that they might can beat your body, but they cannot take your spirit. And if you still have that, you can you can definitely um, make moves in your life. It's when they beat you down so badly until your spirit is broken. See, that's what they right. want. They want to break your spirit. But that did not happen to you. But that did not happen. And you were married 20 years. 20 years. And then what happened? What was? And then, then, you know, one day he, uh, after beating me really bad, he said, I'm leaving. And, you know, one of the things that you find out later is that most women in domestic violence situations go back three and four times. And they go back because you you sit there and you think about, how am I going to feed my family? How am I going to pay the rent? So when they say they're leaving, you beg them to stay, and it goes and, and it becomes a vicious cycle. But one day, he said he was leaving, and I let him leave. I guess he was in a state of shock, and um, I had to start making moves, but I didn't have any money. I would get off the elevator every day and look down the hall to see if the padlocks was on the door was on the doors. But when I before I even picked my kids up from the daycare, I would look. And I said, okay, we have another night. We have a place to sleep. And eventually I made up in my mind that I was going to move. I put, packed up all my stuff and got a truck, went to this apartment, and the man said he didn't take kids. Hmm. So I had no place to go. I, would, I started looking through um, a newspaper, saw this place for rent. Right then and there I had the truck, I had the kids, and... I believe that the landlord probably was in a state of shock because he said to me, oh, okay, I'll call you back in a couple of days. I said, mister, I don't have a couple of days. I have right now. Please look out this window. And he looked out the window and saw the truck. That's amazing. And he, and he said, oh, okay, you know. He said, he okay, take- we're we're coming in now, right? Right. We're coming in right now. I have the money. I have the truck. I didn't really know nothing about this man. He didn't know nothing about me. And 
he just took me in. And I remember you saying that you didn't want to get child support from your husband because that means he would have to have access to the kids, he'd right. have to have visitation. Right, you, right. You... Because unless the laws have changed, but you know they are they once they pay child support, they they have a right to visit mm-hmm. their children. But then that puts you in jeopardy. So and now, don't and think so for one minute that the kids don't suffer. All right. You know, a lot of times we say we're going to stay for the family. We're going to stay for the family. But most most women don't really understand what happens to these children after, you know, mentally. They might not be beat physically, but mentally hearing their mother's screams. Absolutely. It's not a, certainly a horrible right. thing to put a child through. Now, exactly. Let's, let's fast forward a little bit. You got your degree. And now you've got this tax uh, yeah, planning. Yeah, I, I got my degree. I actually finished getting my degree when my children <laughs> finished getting their degree. I was going to school. It took me so long um, because I didn't have money and I didn't have actually in the beginning a means of even going to school. But myself and another um, young lady whose daughter was going to daycare with my daughter, we started swapping. She'd take two days a week to go to school. I'd take two days. And so it took much longer, but um, I eventually finished, and I opened up my own business, Allen Tax and Financial Services. And, and you help um, women. Excuse you me? You help women that are in domestic violence situations. Both, both but... for regular taxes and what I do for women who are in domestic violence situations uh, helps them to attain their goals. A lot of women work. But they, they, um, so they have the, the means for retirement and things like that through their jobs, but they can't live every day because they can't afford the rent. And they live a certain lifestyle. They have to have clothes to wear to, to, wear to work. They have to get their hair done. But, they, it, but it might not be at the same place they've been getting their hair done or mm-hmm. been shopping. They have to downsize. They have to learn how to live off of one salary, and that's where I come in. I help them to do that. Where do you go shopping? It's not enough to tell someone, oh, you know, you have to downsize. You can't buy what you used to buy. We have to help people. We have to teach them where to go. So you are, you are a master of that. You, you help them with survival strategies. You help them with tax and financial planning, and you, I know you're working in the shelters and, and uh, different, different places like that where, where you can work with domestic violence survivors, mm-hmm. and you're also becoming a minister, correct? Well, chaplain, a New a York chaplain. State chaplain. <laughs> so, you'll be able, so you'll be able to yes, kind of help on be, the spiritual level as well. Yes, and, and it'll be give, it will also give me uh, easier access to visit women when they are at the hospital during different odd hours, if they have to go to the hospital or, you know, God forbid that they have to go to prison, you know, or anything Mm -hmm. like that, I have an easier access um, to do that. Well, Denise, thank you so much for being with me today and for telling your story. I mean, to me, it was a very inspiring story. And if there are, if there's anyone out there that might want to have access to some of the knowledge that you have, some of these survival skills and strategies, you have an email that people can can yes. contact you at. Yes, it's it's c h e v c e l at aol dot com. Fantastic, and I'll I'll tell you what. Um, they can also email me, and I'll, I'll screen some of the, um, the, the requests for you and uh, pass them along. Thank you so much, Denise, and I hope so I'll see you again. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you my so much pleasure. for having me. It's my pleasure to be able to help someone else. I know. Thank you again. Thank okay. you so much. Take care. All right. Now, we're going to continue on the topic of financial literacy when we come back. I've got some great resources for you. And if you want more information on Domestic Violence Awareness Month, it's http colon backslash backslash dvam dot v-a-w-n-e-t dot org. And don't worry, it's going to be posted on crimeprevention101.com, my blog. Stay tuned.
Talk, talk, talk. That's all we do is talk. If you'd like to talk, call us toll free right now at 1 866 472 5787. 1 866 472 5787. That's it. That's it. VoiceAmerica.com. After more than 17 years' experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.crimeprevention.com. Prevention101.com for more information. You're walking alone. A group of people is hanging out just ahead. Suddenly, they surround you. Hey, yo, where you going? Come here. Before you know it, you're being robbed. It's called a pack robbery, a robbery involving a group of assailants, and it can be violent. In times like these, trust your instincts. Don't become their next victim. Avoid suspicious groups. Avoid desolate or poorly lighted areas. Be aware of your surroundings. To learn more about pack robberies, visit ncpc.org or contact your local law enforcement agency. A message from the U.S. Department of Justice, National Crime Prevention Council, and the Ad Council. News. 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 Opinion. Opinion. Your voice counts. Call toll free 1 866 472 5787. 1 866 472 5787. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now, back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. Hello again, and thank you so much for tuning in and spending some time with me today. Uh, I want to remind you, please check out my friends at My Mobile Witness. This is a service that turn, turns your camera phone into a personal safety device. It is it's an amazing service and maybe even a life-saving service. So please go to MyMobileWitness.com for more information about it. Now, let's meet two more of the people that, uh, that were at the symposium that I emceed. Uh, David Anderson and Anna, uh, Anya, and gosh, I'm going to lift it. Yeah, and Anya gonna, think. Okay. <laughs> I knew <laughs> okay. I was going to mangle that, Anya. Uh, we're going to continue talking about financial empowerment. Now, David, is, uh, David Anderson is the Executive Vice President of Working in Support of Education, which is WISE, W-I-S-E, but the S is a dollar sign, which I really like. And this is a nonprofit organization that provides national education programs and services that build financial literacy. And they foster social and business entrepreneurship as well. And I think they've got some cheap college kid prep programs and things like that. And they've been reaching out to agencies that serve domestic violence survivors in an effort to help this really needy population with financial uh, empowerment. And David, welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, Susan. Pleasure to talk to you again. And Anya Lusink is a yes, certified. Fin- Did I get it? That's me. <laughs> okay. Is a certified financial planner and the owner of Lusink Financial Planning, and she's been teaching financial literacy workshops at shelters and community colleges and so forth. And she's also the co-director of the pro bono division of the New York chapter of the Financial Planning Association. And this chapter and many other chapters uh, provide free financial planning services to victims of domestic violence. This is a national organization, so uh, we're going to talk about how to find a chapter that might be able to help you out. So, Anya, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you. Yes. Now, that was a great symposium that we did. I, it was so, uh, it was so um, much educational for me. So, um, David, let's just start with you a little. Talk a little bit about... Uh, Wise and the importance of financial literacy for the people that you are serving. Well, thanks, Susan. I I saw a statistic today uh, at a conference that I think is really incredible, and it was that 59 percent, only 59 percent of 
of the people in this country uh, pay their bills on time. And really? <laughs> while you think that over a majority is okay, it, it really isn't. And one of the things that we've learned from the financial crisis, I think, is with statistics like this and others, is that really as a nation, we have an awful lot of work to do in order to become more financially literate and more informed about how to manage our money. And uh, my organization, WISE, has been focusing on this issue for a number of years. And what we try and do is provide education to uh, or facilitate the provision of uh, personal finance instruction to various populations around the country, mainly high schools, but adult populations as well. And we have a very special pitch, which is that we um, uh, examine uh, the students who we reach out to with a, a national standardized certification test. And students who pass that test not only demonstrate that they're financially literate, but they get a credential as well. And that credential is a certification that shows that they have mastered the subject matter about how to manage their money. And we're very excited about this because the credential really has an impact when it comes to looking for a job or if you're trying to get to college, putting the credential on your college application and so on. And for, for survivors of domestic violence, which is the topic of your show, this is really very, very critical because as they transition into the new phase of their lives, they need to demonstrate not only that they have financial independence, but they also have the credentials in order to get work because many of them don't have jobs. So we're very excited to help this particular group of people as they move on to the next phase of their life. Yeah, this is an especially dip, um, interesting uh, challenge because a lot of domestic violence victims have never been allowed to handle finances. That's one way that the abuser... Uh, has re has remained in control. You know, they 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 might not even know anything about paying a bill or having a credit card in their name or, or anything like that. I think it's really amazing, Susan, that that and you've hit the exact point that financial abuse is an integral part of of physical abuse, and and it's the denial of a credit card, the denial of of, of a debit card, the denial of cash, the denial of access to a checking account. How can someone learn how to manage their money and think about how to manage their money when they're denied access to basic financial services? And so mm -hmm. what we're trying to do with, with a program that is designed to help survivors of domestic violence is to bring that education to them and also certify them as financially literate after they take our exam. And we're, we're really thrilled to partner with the Financial Planning Association and Anya, whom you're going to talk to, because mm -hmm. um, that partnership combines the, the tremendous knowledge that the Financial Planning Association has in the area of personal finance um, with our expertise in being able to test students um, who, who take a course on personal finance. It it's, uh, sounds like a marriage made in heaven. So, when, so Anya, oh, yeah. let's talk a little bit about that and what, what the FPA is doing, Financial Planning Association, and, uh, and the pro bono work and what you've been doing. Yes. Um, well, we have an extensive, the FPA in New York has an extensive pro bono program. Our mission is to bring financial planning to the low-income population of New York. We have a committee of about 50 volunteer financial planners. Mm. And we do this by organizing workshops for partner organizations and also providing one-on-one -on -one financial counseling. And uh, one of the partner organizations we work with is Sanctuary for Families. And that's for a New York years, That's we... a New York. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry? I said that's a New York uh, organization. That's a New York in... organization, yes, that mm -hmm. works uh, with victims of domestic violence. And, and you've been... Uh, yes? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you, you've, been, you've been doing workshops and classes with them and everything? Yes. We have been, uh, for, for years we had a workshop that was uh, the basics of financial planning, like goal setting, budgeting, credit repair, debt management, um, savings, banking, also very important. Um, and 
that um, that we we presented those workshops in one of the shelters in in the Bronx here in New York, um, and since. Uh, since a year now, we work together with WISE, and we have a more uh, an advanced program of 12 workshops, and that's uh, what we call Money WISE. And these uh, go the workshops are uh, go a bit further. They also talk about investing, about insurance, about retirement planning, but also about uh, buying or renting a house or starting a small business. And uh, it's it's not only for the situation now, but also to prepare them to to know about finances, mm-hmm. because I think that gives them power. That uh, I also like uh, not to, to mention to call it financial literacy, but financial empowerment. Empowerment, right? Exactly. And there are a number of other chapters of the SPA that also do pro bono work. Is that yes. correct? Absolutely. We are part of the National Financial Planning uh, Association, and every chapter there, uh, uh, in, in almost every county or so, is, uh, is a chapter. And um, we exchange our practices with each other, so we learn from each other. So I learn from programs that are set up in, in Los Angeles and in Texas and, and mm-hmm. wherever. And what we, um, we want to do, we exchange this program that we have in New York. We uh, share that with other uh, chapters and want to encourage them to also set that up in their uh, area. Okay, and now there's a special event coming up, right, nationwide? Yes, there's one, uh, even if there's not such a program in your area. You can also, uh, there's a National Financial Planning Day, and that's organized uh, in cooperation with um, the U.S. Uh, Conference of Mayors and the CFP Board, and that means that many um, cities in, in uh, America will uh from um will share in this event. Uh in New York we organize it on the 23rd of October, but you can go to your uh, to find um such an event in your area to financialplanningdays.org and you can find a local event uh when that takes place in your area. Okay, and I have a uh, is the website for the Financial Planning Association. I have that as F fpanet.net dot net, yes. And oh yeah, you mentioned net. Fpa dot fpa net dot net. Correct. And David, how can? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Fpanet.org is what I. Oh, that's that's also fine. Yeah, both work. Okay. And David, if people want to find out about the um, financial literacy certification. Well, we have our website, which is www.wise-ny.org. And uh, through that main website, that's our organizational website, um, there is a a section on it that describes what we do in the financial literacy world and uh, access to information about our program. Fantastic. And then these programs are all over the country. Well, the program that we're offering to um, uh, high schools around the country is national in scope. Uh, As Anya said, the the program that we're offering to help uh, teach victims of domestic violence about personal finance is currently, uh, and and to, to certify them as financially literate, we're currently offering that in New York City. Um, it's, it's a program that's sponsored by uh, the Allstate Foundation, and the goal is to um, build it out from New York City around the country over time. Uh, yes, we're very excited happens. about this. Yes, I will be going to Denver in November, and then we'll talk about this program to other chapters in the FBA. That's terrific. Well, David and Anya, thank you so much for being with me today. Check out WISE, W-I dollar sign E, or wise-newyork.org, stanet.org. Thank you guys so much, and I'm going to post this on my blog so people can find it there. All right, this is Crime Prevention 101 coming up next. 
what hairdressers are doing about domestic violence. You not want you don't want to miss this. Talk, talk, talk. That's all we do is talk. Yay! If you'd like to talk, call us toll free right now at 1 866 472 5787. 1 866 472 5787. That's it. That's it. VoiceAmerica.com. Hi, this is Susan Bartlestone, host of Crime Prevention 101. And I want to tell you about My Mobile Witness, a revolutionary service that transforms your camera phone into a personal safety device. My Mobile Witness believes safety is improved when you remove anonymity from dangerous scenarios. If you're in a stalking situation, for example, if you have an order of protection against someone, or if your profession places you in situations that are potentially dangerous, I want you to check out My Mobile Witness. And you parents of college students, ask the school to check out the My Mobile Witness University program with custom-tailored options aimed at keeping both students and faculty safe. Every campus could benefit from the My Mobile Witness University service. For more information, go to MyMobileWitness.com. News, opinion, can you hear me? Your voice counts. Call toll free 1 866 472 5787. 1 866 472 5787. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now, back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. Yes, this is Susan Bartlestone, and I want to remind you that Crime Prevention 101 is available on iTunes. You don't even have to be at your computer to listen to all of this goodness. Now, let's meet Angela Watson, who's the Director of Public and Media Relations for the Empire Education Group, and Candace Jackson, who is the Academic Manager of their Manhattan campus. Welcome, Angela and Candace. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Hi. Now, the reason I have Empire on every year is because you, Empire was one of the early supporters of of the prog- of the cut it out program that that teaches salon professionals to recognize the signs of domestic abuse and to help help uh, offer help to their clients. Now, tell everyone about Empire Cosmetology because you're a big group. And yes, how did you get right. involved with cut it out, Susan? We have um, 100 schools across the country. In fact, we just opened our 100th school last month. And what we do is, as you mentioned, about three years ago now, Empire got involved in training every single one of their students. We train 20,000 students every single year through the Cut It Out program. And what that program does is teach students to recognize signs of abuse in their clients, uh, specifically because women tend to bond quickly with their stylists, and they also talk about personal issues with them. So we want to make sure that we arm our students before they head out into the world working world with that type of information because, as you know, when you're working on someone's hair, you might be able to notice bruises or sure. any kind of marks on, in the hair and on the scalp and on the neck that a woman might be able to hide um, with her hair or in other ways. So we really are in a unique position in this field to notice different signs of abuse and to be able to extend a simple card with a phone number on it, with the National Domestic Violence Hotline number on it, uh, to say to this particular client, hey, there is help out there. And, you know, it's true what you said, because a lot of times we will talk to our hairdresser about things that we will not tell our family or our friends, or, or especially because you go back every week, you know, every month to, to this person, and it's, it's, it's your buddy. 
So it, it, it really is a bond in a way, and there, it, it's a very unique uh, relationship that you can have with that stylist. Right, Susan, and there, there is one particular thing that you really don't think of, and that is in abusive situations, a lot of times the, the abusive partner is in control of everything the victim does, from where she goes to what money she spends. Um, they're always there watching over the victim. And the salon may be one particular place where she goes by herself, where mm-hmm. she's going there and, and maybe the abuser isn't with her. Uh, maybe, you know, he's sitting out in the, the waiting area waiting for her, and she's, she's alone at that particular moment in time. So it really is an opportunity for uh, stylists and uh, beauty professionals to recognize any signs of abuse and to simply not get involved in the situation but just say, hey, you, do, you don't have to deal with this alone. There are ways to help. Awesome. I think that's just fantastic. I mean, it's really one of the, the ways we can help on a, on a day-to-day grassroots kind of a, of a level. And I, that's why I, I love having you on the show. Now, what, talk about the Empire Gives Back program, which is your own program. Right. Well, several years ago, we, we decided that it wasn't just enough to, to train our students, but we really wanted to reach out into the communities that our schools are in and help on a grassroots level. So we uh, developed the Empire Gives Back campaign, and it, it's a system-wide campaign that goes through all of our schools designed to offer support in the form of fundraising and education uh, to local domestic violence shelters. So our schools, every 100 of our schools has adopted a local local shelter in the community in which they operate. Uh, so during the year, that particular school is holding fundraisers and special events for that particular shelter. So it's giving the, the school and the students there a bond with a real hometown service in their own backyards that they can see and they can contribute to. And it's a great way for our students to, to get behind the effort and to really see who it impacts. Uh, we also, through Empire Gives Back, offer free services, free beauty services, haircuts, that kind of thing, to women and their children who are living at domestic violence shelters uh, because, obviously, they've been through so much in their lives. The last thing in the world they need to think about is, you know, wh- where am I going to get the money to-, to provide a haircut for my child? Sure. So we do all of those services for free. And then a third critical component to that is that we offer educational endowments to, re- to shelter residents. And we thought that was critical because in so many situations of domestic abuse, the abuser controls everything, including the money. And sometimes uh, victims, uh, they're not able to work. Their abuser won't let them out of the house to work. So that they come to these shelters without a way of providing for themselves. So we offer this type of assistance should a shelter resident want to become a cosmetologist, that we can help them accomplish that dream oh, and become that. financially viable. Fantastic. That's terrific. That's really amazing. I didn't even know that. That's terrific. Mm-hmm. Ah, so now, Candace, let me ask you quickly. Uh, what's going on in the New York area? You're in my hometown here. Any, any I am. We're in, we are in the heart of Manhattan, Herald Square. Um, we actually do a lot. This past weekend, we participated in National Day of Beauty. So we had uh, set up a cut-a-thon. Mm. The majority of our students participated. We have, on our campus, we range anywhere from 450 to 600 students at a time. So it's a lot of people that can put in a lot of effort. So this past uh, weekend, we did a cut-a-thon. We provided services, and 100% of the proceeds went to our local shelter. We chose um, Safe Horizon. We actually mm-hmm. do have a student in our campus that is part of the, the funding that Empire donates, which is great. Obviously, we don't publicize who they are for safety right. reasons. Um, sure. But and, uh, we we do a lot of things. We do food drives. We do cutathons. We started a raffle where students, you know, needed extra equipment or they're getting ready for their state board. So we sold raffle tickets and raised quite a few hundred dollars to donate to the shelter. Um, and we're going to do an ongoing campaign where we started. Um, it's, you know, it's New York City. If you live here, you hear every day on the subway, "Do you have any change? Do you have any change?" Mm-hmm. So we started our own little campaign in-house called Can You Spare Some Change? We have a big bucket at the front desk. People walk by, they dump in a penny, a quarter, a dime, whatever, hoping that we can generate, you know, enough money every single month through the end of the year to just keep contributing to the fund. 
All right, well, I love it. Now, how can people get information about Empire and the Empire Gives Back program so that we can help you help others? Sure. Well, uh, empire.edu is our company's website with a list of all the schools and locations uh, so that, you know, if you would like to go in and contribute to the cause, all of the schools are collecting money for local shelters, so you can stop in there uh, and do that. And also, empiregivesback.com is our um, our program website. And on there, you will find all the information about what we're doing for domestic violence, about the Cut It Out program, about the other uh, services we provide to shelter residents as well. Okay. So that's EmpireGivesBack.com. EmpireGivesBack.com. Well, thank you, Angela. Thank you, Candace. We'll be in touch again. But you know what? This is a wrap for now. I can't believe it. It always goes so quickly. Uh, I'm going to put all of these webs, all of these uh, web addresses on my on my CrimePrevention101.com blog. I'll put some information about Domestic Violence Awareness Month so you can take part in some of the activities. And uh, you know, I always love to hear from you. So please uh, post your comments or suggestions. You can do it on my host page. You can do it on my blog. You can email me solutions at fightsafe.com. Tell your friends about us, and I'll see you next week with more stories, more crime topics, and lots of tips and resources. It'd be a crime not to listen, so stay tuned and stay safe. We hope you got some useful information and inspiration this week on Crime Prevention 101. Susan Bartlestone invites you to join us again next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern Time here on Voice America. If you want to learn more about Susan's guests, sign up for her newsletter, or find out about upcoming teleseminars and workshops, go to www.crimeprevention101.com today. Have a great week and a safe week. Thanks again for listening to the preceding program brought to you on the Voice America Variety Channel. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericavariety.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the preceding program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management.